Hey guys, Tickle here. We got Ernst King on the screen there. We got a little old carrier action for you. This time we got a game in the Tier 5 American Carrier Ranger. There's the build. Uh, note we did go ahead and <laughs> unlock the Lexington. That puts me under 10 million credits. Oh my, I'm sweating now. Uh, <laughs> wasn't too long ago that I had about 200 million credits, but that's all gone. So... Probably cover the Lexington here at some point in the future, but a lot of you guys have been asking me for some aircraft carrier footage, so I thought I'd give you this game here. This is kind of what I would uh, view as, you know, what you want to be doing in the carriers. Now, I'm not a carrier pro. I've not played a lot of carriers, so if you're watching this, you think, man, this guy can't drop worth a damn. You're probably right. But... I think my overall strategy is pretty sound, at least for the amount of games that I've actually played in these things. So basically, those of you that have heard me speak about the carriers in the past, I think their main strength is and continues to be uh, helping get rid of the destroyers. After that, do whatever you want to do. Just torp, 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 or drop some bombs or whatever the heck. Try and get some damage from there. But if you can help your team get rid of the destroyers, either if you can hit them uh, with the bombs or... Torpedoes, go ahead and do that. Now, I think an opening move that you can potentially do with the planes here is, like if I clicked the drop button right now, uh, about half my planes, I believe, would drop their ordnance, go back to the carrier, and then I would have half the squadron flying around, and then we can spot with that. That would be good airplane management. I haven't yet mastered that technique. I'm not even 100% sure if that's how it works. You guys let me know in the comments. I'm still kind of figuring out the you know, the basic mechanics of actually playing the carriers, but I've seen players do that on the PC version, and I believe that works here. So we're going to see as this match goes on, you know, plane management, especially at these lower tier carriers where you don't have as many planes, you kind of run low, and that becomes a problem. Also, dodging flak. You can see the flak bursts on the screen there, and I think uh, you guys are telling me, and I believe from my own experience, that if you actually drive or fly <laughs> through those... Uh, the bursts when they're you know actually exploding then your planes will take a lot of damage there so again correct me in the comments if i'm mistaken about that but you can see right off the bat here uh we're just we sailed or we <laughs> sailed we flew forward and we basically were flying around until we saw the aa emanating from an unknown source of the most forward position on their team that's usually going to be the destroyer and once we see that AA going off, then we just hover over the plane. We're going to go ahead and drop them. You saw we were trying to drop them, but uh, not getting a lot of great strikes right off the bat. Might as well try and hit them with the damage. But, again, if we can fly over these destroyers, hopefully our team is going to be spotting them because teams that win games usually shoot spotted destroyers. If your team's not going to do that, unfortunately, as a carrier player, I find it at least hard for me to kind of carry the game beyond uh, the the impact that we can have vis-a-vis -vis these red destroyers. So that's usually what I focus on. I usually like to start with the HE bombs. I find that those are easier to hit the destroyers with, personally. Uh, the torpedoes on planes go very, very slow. I think uh, Marblehead, 49 kilometers, even slower than that slow. But the HE bombs, you can get in there. You can potentially hit some shots. We're going to actually see... A pretty decent shot later in the game. But these opening ones, we got them with the fire there. That helps with the visibility as well. Keep in mind, if your ship is on fire, their detectability goes up. So if we can hit them with the HE bombs, then that adds to the detectability of the destroyers, even when we're not actually in the vicinity. So good play there. Our team did a great job shooting that enemy destroyer, and you can see he's been removed from the board. Now I'm considering... Uh, migrating over to sea, trying to immediately attack that destroyer. It's a kid. Those of you that know much about the kid know that the kid has extremely good AA. And look at his positioning. I'd have to go through basically all those uh, red ships to get to him. So I, my thinking at this point in time is, okay, let's let that situation develop. They already got C. Uh, we'll see how that plays out. But if we can get a little bit of damage over here, help our team out, make sure we win this side. Because we got currently A and B. And that's a good winning strategy. We want to secure the middle and a flank and then hold that for the rest of the match. So currently we have a win condition in place. I want to preserve that if possible. And here we're just going to go ahead and try and torp some of these battleships. Uh, the battleship's kind of overturning there, trying to angle towards the incoming torps. But a lot of times it's very easy to kind of overturn when it comes to these torps. Because again, very slow. So 
I think initially he had a pretty good line, but maybe he didn't know exactly where I was coming from, or his ship just kind of overcorrected, and we were able to get him with a couple blasts there. You can see the kid is currently spotted. I'm hoping my team takes him out, and then we can just go into damage production mode. Uh, takes a lot of the pressure off the carrier, but he's going to get away momentarily. And, you know, at this point in time, I'm still not ready to commit to uh, going through that line of red ships because that's going to tear our planes to shreds. And you can see lower right-hand corner. We're already pretty low on the plane, so I'm not in a mad rush to continue to drop these. We got our side's destroyer down, and now we're kind of moving in here. I'm initially thinking, okay... Should we attack the kid? But we got torpedo bombs, and again, I don't think trying to torpedo destroyers usually that productive, but I have had some strikes on destroyers, again, because they they kind of overestimate the speed of the torps, and just due to how fa how slow they actually go, uh, sometimes they inadvertently move into them. But Graf Spee, potential to cause a lot of problems over here. I think this is a valid target for the torpedo bombers, and we're going to go ahead and try and drop that. Now, if you're new to the carriers are trying to figure out how to do that you see when we're lining up the torps there you got an orange zone uh you know the aiming cone or whatever you're gonna call it the part closest to you is orange the part further away from you is green now if the, that's the army distance of the torp so if that ship for instance turns in or you actually get too close to them the torps might look like they're about to hit the ship but they don't actually arm so if you notice the torpedo bombers coming right at you uh, sometimes turning into them is quite profitable because they'll try and get as close to you as possible and then, you know, due to the fact that you're moving into the torps, you can actually, they'll hit your ship, but they won't actually go off. Uh, here we got a Z-39 versus a kid. I'm thinking Z-39 advantage. If he's got a sonar, if he's got his sonar, he could just stay in that cloud, gun the kid down all day and take him out quite easily. But he's getting chased out of the cloud there for one reason or another. Everyone's piling in on him, but we got our HE bomber here, and we're going to go in as close as possible. And there we go. We get him and finish him off there. So <laughs> I guess, you know, we've contributed to killing both of the destroyers. Are we primarily responsible for killing either of them? No. Our teammates are doing a great job actually shooting at them. But first destroyer, we try to keep him spotted as much as possible. And that one, I'm, I was pretty hesitant to attack the kid directly until he got... Uh, pretty low and vulnerable there, but we were able to give him the coup de gras. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, fire on this Queen Elizabeth, catch him with the fire, and set him on fire there. So we're going to... Nope, looks like a damage con there. But we're getting, you know, this isn't what I would classify as a high damage game, at least thus far. But, you know, I'm thinking we're playing the role pretty well. Now note the situation on the map. They've captured A, now we've actually flipped C, and we still maintain control of B. So... If you look at the scoreboard, we're only up, what, two ships, which is decent, but it's due to the fact that we've had the double cap versus one cap for basically the entirety of the match. That's when these scoring gaps widen, and we're going to see how clutch that is as this game goes on. This is going to be a full-length match here, even though it looks like we're doing pretty well. And you might be saying to yourself, well, how does your team blow this? But you always want to be checking the compositions of the teams here. They got a carrier, we got a carrier, okay, that's a wash. Look at all the cruisers, and they got two battleships. One of them is going to be a Sharnhorst, and I think the other one, I can't, there's the Queen Elizabeth. So that one's gone now, but Sharnhorst, very dangerous against cruisers. And this guy, along with the Fiji, who's their other cruiser, they're going to do some work on our team, and they're actually going to whittle them down. So we're going to be checking our team's health periodically, and once we notice, oh man, everyone on our team's really low health, then I'm starting to get nervous, because these guys are recognizing if we want to actually win this game, we're going to have to move into the base, uh, get some work done. They're going to have to probably kill all of our ships. I'm trying to do as best I can to prevent that. The Sharnhorst, Fiji, once again, both very dangerous. But the Sharnhorst in this situation, I think, is more dangerous just due to the fact that his primary targets are cruisers. Now, other cruisers can potentially angle against the Fiji. Uh, it's still going to be able to do a lot of damage. So, you know... Here we're scanning the health. This is I thought it happened a moment ago, but we noticed there, okay, everyone's basically a one-shot or very low health, and now I'm getting a little nervous. Now, hopefully you've been noticing as this match goes on, we keep adjusting our position. I think the idea with the carriers is you want to get as close to the action as possible without getting spotted. And uh, 
once you get spotted, a lot of if you're within range of guns on the enemy team, they're going to want to shoot you. People love to shoot carriers, and so you want to be kind of adjusting your position as the match goes on. As a carrier player, you got the most time to be looking at the map out of anyone on your team, and you're kind of, you know, the game manager in that sort of uh, regard. And you got to be keeping an eye on the game flow, see what you can do. There's going to be opportunities even to capture caps that's not going to come into play this game, but if you got a cap that's unattended that you can actually maneuver your carrier into, go ahead and do that, especially if your team's not uh, taking the time to do that. Pushing in, continuing on as the red team, and once again, you know, we got a Dallas, we got another cruiser. The cruiser all the way to the east, he's actually going down to engage the carrier. I think that's a mistake. Now, my role at this point in time, we're not going to be doing a lot of damage. We're basically low on planes here. We're only got two at the moment, so... Even if we're able to hit these guys, we're not going to be doing huge damage to these guys. But if my team can position themselves safely behind the islands, then I can spot these guys. I can try and stay out of their AAA range, keep them spotted, and then hopefully my team can shoot them. That's what I'm thinking. But look at that guy cruising down towards the carrier. He's getting them spotted, but I think the Sharn Horse or the Fiji or someone's going to whack him and he's actually going to be taken out of the game. Sharn Horse is the most dangerous ship on the team. Fiji number two carrier number three the carrier is an assist type of a ship it's there to help spot deal some incidental damage and kind of manage the game from afar but we're continuing to move to the northeast and that's because due to the game situation again we have a bunch of really low health ships in our team uh they might they're basically going to have to win by killing all the ships now if i'm not moving away from these guys if i'm not uh paying attention to my position they spot me then they're going to whack me and the Planes on the enemy team can spot me at any point in time. You got to keep that in mind. So that's why I'm moving where I am here. We're not just accidentally moving where we're going. I'm trying to get as basically to the far northeast end of the map as I can possibly get. Protecting this ship is paramount because you can see they've actually tied it up on uh, ship count. Okay, so down goes the Shiron Horse here. That was clutch, but. This Fiji and the carrier, they're going to do work. They're going to remove the other ships. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and launch those torps. Something to consider. I'm not a good enough carrier player to really implement this yet, but if I ever get good at carriers, um, creating crossfires with your torpedoes, just like you'd like to do as a destroyer player, a viable strategy and something you want to be paying attention to. Down goes the Colorado there. But let's say I'm uh, forcing this Fiji to angle towards my torpedoes if my teammates happen to have crossfire shots in them then then they can whack them so we're not really going to see that in play here but i did want to point that out now this fiji uh it's 1v1 at this point in time he's going to kind of pull into b turn away from me capture the cap but you always want to be checking the time okay if you got two minutes left three minutes left in the game and you're down 400 points even if you capture all the caps you're not going to win on score at that point in time so I don't know if this guy could catch me or not, and again, we're trying to get as far away from him as possible, but I do want to point out he is going the wrong direction. I'm trying to finish him off here. Uh, we do get a reset on him and maybe a little bit of damage there. You can see he's pretty low. If he would have gotten a fire, perhaps that would have killed him. End of the game, but um, nonetheless, he still r remains alive. Now I go ahead and launch a squadron here. I should just ignore launching the planes at this point in time maneuver my ship behind those islands make sure i can't get spotted and once we're done doing whatever we do with this that's exactly what we're going to do because once again score wise we've already won the game uh ship wise if he could catch me if he could spot me then they could kill me potentially it still would take a little bit of time to kill the carrier but the fiji high damage output type of uh ship and very dangerous to everything it encounters so you know I'm basically trying to finish the game off here cause, just because he's basically a one-shot, but it's not really that necessary. And you can see there we actually abandon the planes and uh, go ahead and turn. We're just making sure we get behind this island, okay? You always want to understand when you've won the game, and we've won the game now as long as we don't get sunk, okay? So that's why, you know, even though potentially we could have killed him there, uh, I felt it was more important, more reliable in terms of winning this game just by making sure that there's no way that we can get killed here so again he turned away from us to capture the base uh, so he'd have a very hard time catching us at that point in time 
even if he sailed right through it chasing us. I don't know if he could catch us or not. Uh, carriers aren't striking me as the fastest ships known to man, but um, nonetheless, that kind of is going to go ahead and seal the deal there. So once again, my strategy for carriers is focus on spotting the destroyers, hope and pray that your team's good enough. It's comprised of good enough players that will recognize when the destroyers are spotted and then take those shots. And then once those destroyers are down, then you kind of have to evaluate the game situation consistently and then continuing, continue to, uh, you know, say to yourself, okay, what can I do now to help our team? And again, I feel like the game's kind of out of my hands. It, maybe it's just because I'm not that good of a carrier player yet, but that's kind of the main reason I don't like them is I feel really hands off and really kind of at the mercy of my team, you, you know, d hoping that they can utilize what I'm trying to give them as a carrier player. So anyway, that's a look at the Ranger for you guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. If you did, please hit the thumbs up. New to the channel, consider subscribing. We've got lots of World of Warships. It's coming all the time. Questions, comments, leave them below. Love to hear from you and see y'all later. Peace.